just talking about that that moment in time. I mean, we were all much younger when when they were breaking in America. So I don't know. I just like that stuff. I, I there's so many bands I love, and the fact that we've had the chance to play with some, with many of them, to to work with people that we really admire, it's just uh, great for us. Had you met Draymond before? He yeah, actually went there. he he met us before Ascendancy came out. Um, he saw us with. Danzig. We were opening for Danzig right. in Chicago, and he was there, and he saw us. And he was really, really into us. We gave him one of our hoodies. Kind of, kind of kept in touch and saw him over the years. And then it wasn't till Mayhem 2011 we gave him in waves, and he just came back. He's like, "Listen, guys, you know, I'm really impressed with the growth of your band. Love what you guys have done with this record, and you know, maybe down the line it'd be cool if we could work together. Whether." That's a song, whether it's a, a full album, and it's kind of one of those things we just, we, we thought about it for a while, and then when it kind of came time to pick a producer, we were just like, you know, David's really into working with us, he's a really awesome dude, having spent some time with him on Mayhem, and then finally, when we went to his house on a day off of, of a tour, and we just kind of sat there listening to some of our demos, and listening to the excitement in what he was hearing, and you know, what he really wanted to try to bring out a trivium on the, on this record. And we felt really good about it. You know, you want to work with people that want to be a part of the project and they're very excited for it. Yeah, so it gets people fired up if it gets you guys fired Yeah, definitely. Get the fans fired. Definitely. Um, you have so much input. Would you ever consider adding an additional member to trivium <clears throat> in the form of David? Uh, uh, <laughs> no, I think, uh, I think his hands are pretty tied with uh, his projects and I'm sure down the line, he'll be coming back out with uh, some disturbed stuff. But it was great, man. It was a real great honor. And he, I think maybe uh, people's, uh, what they see of him, his persona is, is like a very, you know, very serious guy. And it's really funny, man. Like, we got him cracking up the whole time because we were, like, always joking and stuff. And I think that was the best part about recording was just, you know, just fooling around, just laughing about things. Did and you just, pull pranks on him? I, I mean, no, no pranks, but I mean, we definitely, you know, we were laughing, they're sitting there watching like YouTube videos, just cracking up about things, and I, I guess maybe people have probably never seen that side of him, and uh, you know, they just know the David Draymond that plays in front of, you know, ten thousand people, and it's just funny, man. He's a normal dude, just like any of us, and I guess sometimes when people meet us, they're probably expecting like something different, maybe like, oh, they're not going to be cool, and then when they see, hey, we're just approachable people and we want to have a good time and listen to music and that, that was the fun thing man we just we really had you're smiling thank you are you smiling I, we did we had a, it was a great time he had us over we recorded in most of it in his place and we were in austin texas and it's a great town and uh, he, he just showed us a good time there and party yeah we, <laughs> just yeah party. we really had we really had a great time out there you're specifically very fan interactive, aren't you? Yeah. You're constantly sort of like talking <clears throat> and feedbacking to fans. How do you deal with it when um, they become slightly over personal when you dedicate so much of your time mm. to actually chatting to them? Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess when people kind of step over the line, but yeah, that's a, it's a little bit too much. I mean, I try to always keep it nice if I if I ever have to be like hey that's maybe a little bit too much but for the most part people are pretty respectful and I think that people really enjoy that we are speaking with them online and give our time when we can so I think for the most part we never really have those problems because I think people just appreciate that and they don't want to step over the boundaries you know? yeah that's was going to say what well, do you get the trolls how do you deal with the trolls honestly I don't really get too many on online I don't have people really finding me on there I mean when I do it's it's usually I can diffuse it with either humor or just you know just talking to people and like not reacting to it usually is the best and sometimes when someone will say something that's I don't know maybe it's a little mean or uncalled for if you kind of say well hey what about this or that and then they're usually they'll back down and I think and they end up being like all right maybe what I said was kind of a of a dick move, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like the internet's just a weird spot, and you kind of got to take it for what it is, and just realize that you know everyone has a voice, and it can be amplified with that, and that's in any kind of entertainment, news, anything. There's comments everywhere, and people have their opinions. 
That's all. You, you can't let it really get under your skin too much. Is that the same sort of situation that you get if, say, people compare this album, this latest album, yeah. um, to your previous catalogue? Do you tend to sort of like go, well, I like them all and I yeah. don't want to... Yeah, it's, it's different because people view the music differently, I guess. I know I've, I've done it for other bands that I like as well. You kind of... You have a special place in your heart for the, the albums you discovered a band on or that you prefer them the most and that's your frame of reference with that band and you compare anything new to those to those things so when we go into write we don't think all right we're going to make this part like ascendancy and then this part's going to be the crusade and you know we don't fit it in like that i think just we've written those records and those things are still a part of us and it kind of comes out that way but i mean if people enjoy it and, and if it reminds them of things they like about those other albums i think that's a, a positive thing I know, so. And what are Trivium's dreams, <clears throat> inspirations? You've been going 10 plus years. Well, I mean, that was definitely one of the dreams, to keep going, to keep progressing. And I think for us, it's, it's to keep pushing our music, keep pushing the boundaries, not ever feeling that we need to play it safe in any way. And you know, whether that's people we choose to work with, um, ideas we have on the records, we want to be honest and put it all out there. And sometimes you have to accept that not everyone will get that. Um, that's just the one thing that we want to keep doing. And I guess in terms of dreams, just keeping this going as long as possible, reaching the widest audience possible and you know, bringing people into what we do and hopefully heavy music in general. Yeah. What do you think about um, people that say like metalcore? Because I know labeling a band as a particular genre is yeah. a bad thing. However, having groups of certain stuff, it's like, I mean, for example, go to power metal. Yeah. It's a power metal, like, it's yeah, yeah. there, core cool, I like. Um, how do you feel when people come across and they go, that's not metal? That's not, that's not really metal. It's kind of one of those things, it's like, I mean... Because they bash Ring the Horizon for years and you get that... Yeah, it's kind of a weird thing, I mean, it's kind of like, you don't really own the... the you're not the owner of metal, you don't really get to determine that, I think what is metal to people i mean it can be so many different things there's so many genres and i to me that's kind of uh kind of arrogant to to be like well, that's not metal and it's like well who are you to say that's not metal i mean to me a, a band like bring me the horizon i think what makes them stand apart from bands that they've come out with is you know they they push their music they want to you know bring their music to a wider audience and they, they deliver with it and like i was saying earlier to someone it was you, know, you can't expect the next Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, Metallica. Those bands are the, who they are because they went their own way, they did it the way they wanted, and you know they're unique. And then those next type of bands aren't gonna sound and look like those bands. You can't, you can't keep it. I don't know. It's, it's tough to say, but to compare someone to a Metallica is is an unbelievably high bar that no one will ever be able to recreate what they did. It'll only be bands that'll. Do it in their own way, and I think that's just the way it's going to be. And you know, whether it fits that person's narrow-minded view of what metal's supposed to be, I mean, if that person doesn't see it that way, well, you know, what? there's a lot of other people that see it differently. Absolutely. So, will Trivium, when Metallica <clears throat> and Sabbath, when they will retire, because unfortunately they do age yeah. like the rest of us mortals, who are Trivium going to be headlining these festivals with? Who's going to be, who are going to be your counterparts that are stepping up to the plate? I mean, I definitely think, um, I definitely think Avenge for sure. Um, they're, they're a band that I think they share that same sort of mindset of, you know, doing what you want and, you know, putting on the biggest possible show. And I've always respected bands that do that. I think, um, you know, Bullet's definitely been one. Bring the Horizon for sure. I think that I, they definitely will. I think they've grown into uh, a pretty outstanding band you know I think a lot of people gave them it was the same thing for us when we came out people they don't want to believe the hype they want to believe that it's not a real thing and that it's manufactured and that it's all magazines just propping it up but you know eventually the music speaks for itself and then they put out a great album and I think it solidified them I think a lot of people gave them the chance then and it's kind of what happened to us over the years of you just keep making the music you stay honest to yourself and then people eventually you can kind of win some of those people over. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Uh, 
I mean, well, it's, it's like you guys are like the new era of metal as well. So the old yeah. era of metal is gonna be ending. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely bands really like I think Machine Head's definitely one. You know, they, yeah. they're a staple of of metal now. They they've kind of crossed over to that. I, yeah, I mean, they've crossed into that kind of legendary status, you know, and they, they do headline some festivals already, so there's so many bands. Big, big, big core four. Yeah, I mean, there's a, ton, I mean, there's a lot of great bands. We toured with Five Finger Death Punch. Um, they're, they're a band that kind of shares that same mindset that we do, and I think the, the thing that's great is, like, there's not meant to be just one band doing that. There needs to be band, a lot of bands doing that to create that type of healthy scene. Yep. You know, I think because there was Iron Maidens and Metallicas and Sabbaths and countless other bands, you know, it made those festivals special. It made it made a great, healthy metal scene. And I, I think there are bands that, that still have that goal, and we're all kind of just working towards that, and it takes time. Yeah, well, 10 years over the next few yeah. years that you'll probably get your chance. <clears throat> Loyalties and priorities is triggering number one for you always. What, priorities? Loyalties and priorities, uh, yeah, with regard to working or other um, bands or even family? Well definitely I think we all share you know our family and each other our number one you know we I, I'd say family first and then obviously the band and that's something we've always thought thought about you know when it comes to outside things because there's always opportunities and things that get thrown your way and it it's good to not always take everything you know leave some things on the table and I think you always got to keep Trivium in mind. How would this affect Trivium? How, what would this look like for Trivium? And I think we all have that, and we all are very protective of that. And I think uh, that's definitely the priority for us. Good. Do you listen to your own music, or are you your own worst critic? Um, yeah, I'll definitely listen to stuff time to time, especially when we have to rehearse, or if I want to like learn, relearn an old one that we haven't played or haven't played in a while. And, definitely nice to just pop it on, especially around the recording of albums, to kind of get a frame of reference for like mixing or sonically how things sound. Um, yeah, I definitely will listen from time to time. I'm not one that's going to be like, oh, I don't want to listen to that again, I already did it. And I, enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy the music we play, and we still love playing the songs live, like a song like Cool Harder, which we've played thousands of times by now. It's still fun, it's still a rush to play it. Is that the best fan reaction, do you think? Honestly... I mean, it's kind of changed over the years. Um, it depends. Sometimes it is. Sometimes in waves takes it. Sometimes Shogun now, we've just started playing. and It's a very long song, but people are really, really into it when we play it. I think people are starting to be able to cope with longer songs because of the progressive metal movement. Yeah. They, they no longer need well, three minutes. They're quite happy to go for seven. Yeah, I, I think that is, that is one thing. I mean, maybe... Maybe because the album's not the same anymore. It's I mean, people just want to have a, like a song or two that just takes you on that journey, and that's what they have time for. But I guess it was one of those things when we made show them, we weren't we were just you know making the music we wanted to, and it ended up being a little bit longer on some of the songs, in particular Shogun. So um, yeah, it's weird now. A couple years later, that album's become a, a fan favorite, and people really love that about the album. Yeah. They just want to hear us play. So. The longer yeah. the better. <laughs> I know you've got um, pretty devoted fans. You just got a uh, BC Rich signature model. Yeah, it's my you? third one now. Is that, oh, well, okay. Well, it's I've the... Only, I've only got three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. I've been with BC Rich though since pretty much 2005, and before that, that was the brand that I always loved. I always played the BC Rich basses and guitars, and that was the only company I wanted to work with. So it worked out, and when they asked me to do a signature back, it might have been 06, I was surprised. I never thought I would get one. And, you know, they're awesome company. I was just like, I want an all black base based off my last signature. And they just got it whipped up. Sent me a few. <laughs> it's got whipped up, yeah. Yeah, there, here it else. is. And uh, I didn't know they were actually going to release it I, at first because like, they never really said if it was going to be released at NAM. And then I'm like, oh, that's cool. They put it in the catalog. So. Very, very Did you have any specifications? I just wanted it just like black. the. I wanted it to be the exact same as my last base. It was an all natural wood finish, but I just wanted it all black instead. All the same specs that I had before. Oh. Um, trivium means three, and it means other things as well. Yeah. Give me three personal or bad morals or rules that Trivium stands by. Rules. Um, 
I would say the, the one big rule is that you know no matter no matter what with you know having a good time partying all that stuff that you know we all kind of expect each other to to get up on stage and, and be at a hundred percent and you know have that personal responsibility that we can all have a good time but we all need to you know be up there and and put on a great show for our fans and you know not waste anyone's time that that's a big rule um let's see what else it's probably the biggest of them uh number two are there any tour bus rules tour bus rules i mean honestly <laughs> keeping like keeping the bus clean uh we're <laughs> very exciting. we're very like very adamant about that like and, and usually i think bus drivers are surprised because uh, that's usually part of the job for a bus drivers to clean the bus and we'll come up there and be like all right it's clean but we're going to clean it more and you know matt's very very particular about organization and stuff so you know we usually clean it and just keeping it clean that's a big thing i mean when you're out on the road for three four months mm -hmm. in a vehicle um uh, you know buses to the to people when you're seeing them like oh man that's amazing it's a big bus but when there's 10 people on it every night mm -hmm. it gets very small quick and um you just gotta keep it clean. And then, uh, try to think what else, third. Uh, just have a good time and enjoy it. You know, there, you can really nitpick everything and we're very hard on ourselves when it comes to playing and, and making sure the show's good and that the albums are up to a standard, but sometimes you can do it so much that you lose what it's all about. And just having fun, being in the moment, enjoying this while it lasts, so. <laughs> while it keeps going, positivity. Um, are you writing yet for your next album? Uh, yeah, we've been writing a lot actually. Uh, we don't have any set thing about what we're going to do yet, but for me personally, when I got home, I, I kind of set up a new home studio and I just, I just wanted to start writing again and not focus on finishing full songs, but mainly just getting really amazing parts. And when I felt good that I had enough there, just kind of maybe move on to something else or not force it too much, not force like I need to get a song done or let me finish this full idea. I, I really want to get back into um, in the habit of taking ideas into when we jam and just letting a lot of a lot of the other stuff just kind of fill in by all of us playing and mm. experimenting. More of jam. Yeah, so like having the yeah. idea ahead of time. Like I think it's really important to go in, have a couple riffs, a couple ideas, and then you can kind of fill in those blanks, like what could go here, what could we do more of? So it's getting based, like the, base, the basics. Yeah, the, the basics riff. of the songs, and you know, you have a really good riff, that's a, a great way to start any hard rock, metal tune, you know, yes. you need the riffs, so. Um, what have you got planned for 2014? We're touring up till August, I know that for a fact, uh, pretty s continuously, and then we might take a little break, after that, and then we'll probably tour a little bit at the end of the year. Then I'm not sure. Uh, 2015 is kind of open to possibly recording more new music. Um, probably uh, that's the 10th anniversary of our album Ascendancy, so mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll do something for that, something cool. Um, no real set plans though, further than that. I think we have so much that just lined up in the next six months that we're like, all right. It's just deal with that first, first. Yeah. yeah. Deal with that. And lastly, um, you have been in the industry a long time, and you're a successful band. Have you got any words of wisdom? I'm a massive supporter of the underground metal scene. I support mm. a lot on the side. Yeah. Have you got any words of wisdom that you could impart to them that will help them on the road to the success yeah. that you've um, achieved? It's true. I think the main thing is to just realize that if you if you really want to do it, that it's gonna probably take a lot longer than you would like it to and that no matter what level you get to you always run into hardships there's always um, decisions that have to be made that aren't easy and that you know no matter what level you're, you're gonna have to deal with stuff and that there it's a reality it's a real thing it's it becomes a career and that becomes more complicated when something you love becomes a career. So you have to always keep in mind that those two things, that it, things take a lot longer and that <laughs> the reality of, of playing in a band that's more than just playing music. Perfect. And they came in there and that was my last question. Awesome. Good. So thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And I'm sort of going to, sorry, I wasn't uh, winking at you. Right no, that's all right. Honestly. <laughs> I found the strike